We're here with Phil Quartz, the president director sportif of Amore Evita Continental Team, who have recently signed three Canadians, James Piccoli, Alex Catterford, and Mike Woods. Phil, first of all, before we talk about these signings, tell us a little bit about your cycling background and cycling career. Sure. I grew up on the east coast in New Brunswick, training uh, with Luke Arsenal at the Atlantic Cycling Center. Um, Luke sent me to Europe to, to learn cycling, if you will, um, the real cycling from, from the European standpoint. And uh, I raced as an amateur there for a couple of years in France and um, moved on to a continental team out of Toronto called Ital Pasta. Um, Ital Pasta at the time was, uh, was one of the two continental teams in the country. And, uh, sorry, three. Uh, with Symmetrics and Jet Fuel, and um, basically raced there for a season. Didn't feel I was ready for that level, so went back to France to race um, at the as a Division One amateur with uh, Sable. With Sable, uh, I had a really good season, and uh, I I came back to Canada as for. Uh, personal reasons and ended up racing for Garneau Optique with David Veillou and Alex Lavallee and we had a really good year and uh, that brought me back to Calion um, which was which was racing in Canada and in Europe that year so it was a it was a good let's say bridge back to Europe and uh, by going back to Europe um, Amora Vita picked up on it and uh, they signed me originally in that during that year for for a couple of years and I, I raced there I won a race had, had a few podiums and um, you know it was just time for me to move on from from the racing side of things and get get to the let's call it the business side or the the sports directing side and um, basically when I was looking for uh, a team Garneau Quebec or had an opening and I came I came on board there and we had a good year um, with Bruno Langlois and and company Remy Gautioua and and whatnot and we had a, we had a solid season that season and um, Amora Vida I stayed in really good contact with and they're they're pretty much my Italian or European family if you will and uh, it's the Fanini family they run um, they've run this team for it's going on 40 40 plus years and uh, we're the oldest continental team in the world so the prestige of being on a, on a very old team that races on all continents is um, is great. It's a good it's a good experience and it was a good opportunity for me. Last year, um, I brought David Boilly with me, um, who had had injuries throughout the year and you know tried to tried to fight through them, but you know took a step aside to to deal with those. And this year, um, you know we've. We've built uh, a really, really solid team, and I've been able to to incorporate three of the most talented upcoming Canadians, if you will, in James and Mike and, and Alex. And uh, you know, I'm really excited with for the to get the three of them in into the European cycling scene uh, pretty much full time. It's um, you know, it's one thing to go over and do one or two or a, a small block of racing, but to do an entire season is a different, uh, it's a different ball game. And um, it's really, I think it's going to be important in in each of their their careers that they get this exposure, and it hopefully it's the the start of something to come for Canadian cycling. You're basically the Canadian connection to all this, is that right? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, well, what led up to the signings? Were you in contact with them, or did Amore Vita just have an eye on them, and, and you just thought that you know these guys were the, would, would fit in with your team? How, how did that happen? Well, this year we, we were studying... Um, we've been studying Canadian cycling for a while, and with, uh, with uh, Spider Tech going away, um, it really... 
let's say, put, put Canadian cycling at, at a risk on the professional scene because we didn't, like, we can grow our talent, but once, once we grow it, it's tough to, to push it on because it's really tough for a Canadian to integrate a European team. So my side of things is, you know, sitting down with, uh, with the Panini family and with Christian, the manager, he, um, you know, we basically came to this consensus that in the beginning we wanted to build a Canadian team for, for this year or a majority of Canadians. And that didn't, it didn't pan out for one reason or another, but I was able to bring the, the three guys on. Um, we, we'd been in contact, Mike and I had been in contact throughout uh, the year that I was at Garneau. Um, he's an obvious talent. He, he's new to the sport. Um, very, very green, but the most talented of raw talents there is out there. Um, so for me to bring him to Europe is it's an honor, and I think it's going to be a good opportunity for Mike because climbing races don't – Canadian or North American climbing races are few and far between, whereas you get it every week in, in Europe. So giving him that exposure is going to grow. For Alex, um, I dealt with Alex last year a bit because I, I put him in contact with Bruno Langlois at uh, Garno, and he, ra- he was able to race a year there, have a good season there. I, on my end, directed him at the end post race in, um, in Ireland. And he, he was a kid, he was a kid that came to, came to Ireland, maybe not with the best form, but definitely with the, the most or the best fighting mentality that I'd seen in a rider in a long time. And that really stuck with me. So when, when we started talking and, you know, he, he was looking for the opportunity to come to Europe and get into the big races, you know, the fit was just natural. Okay. Peakily or it was a little bit of a different situation. I wanted to bring James on last year as a stagiaire and it didn't work out either because of the Canada games and the Francophone games. But James, you know, he proved to me last year that he, he deserved his spot um, by, by his results in August and, and throughout the year. So I think that, you know, here you have three talented riders, two of them very young, and, you know, they have their place, but they would definitely be looked over by any European team if they had sent a resume or made a phone call. But I have the opportunity now to to contribute to their careers and help them grow as bike riders and, and hopefully as human beings, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gonna. It's a big cultural experience to be with the Mora Vida because we have nine nationalities in the team. Okay. Well, I see that Alex, both Alex and James, have uh, had really good results in individual time trialing. Was that something that was important to the team? It is, in the sense that it proves that they have they have a big motor. We don't we don't do very many time trials in Europe because European racing doesn't have a ton of long time trials or a ton of time trials over 10K, if you will. Okay. So they, um, you know, proving that they had big motors was critical, um, and then the rest will follow. Um, you know, Alex has a, has a background on the track, and, you know, that stuff's proven that, you know, you, you see – you see development through that, and uh, if we can get him in the races that are a good fit for him, then it's going to be good for all of us. Okay, now, um, what's going to be expected of these guys in their first year, basically? Well, I, I think they, each and every one of them has have different expectations of themselves, and I have I obviously have different expectations of each and every one of them. Um, you know, in the beginning of the year, obviously, they're going to be working for our Italian climber, Leonardo Pinizzotto, who, um, who won two, two races last year, and, you know, he, he's up there in all the Italian races, so it's very important for us to have, you know, to show them a support role, and then, let's say, when, when the time comes, set them free to, to get their own results and have the team behind them in, in those races. That's that's critical for me. Um, it's going to be a learning curve for 
for sure, but the learning curve comes through exposure and you know, that exposure is going to come through racing and, uh, and being with the team. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how, how each and every one of them handles it. Well, it's exciting for Canadian cycling. And for me, going back, speaking to you over the years, um, every time that you have uh, pointed out a rider with potential, there were times when, you know, you even left me scratching my head, but within a year or two, those riders all rose to the top. So the fact that you branded, you know, you have your brand on these three riders and, you, you know, you believe in them makes me believe also that they're going to prove themselves. So congratulations on that as a director sportif. For Canadian cycling, it's also exciting to have someone over in Europe like yourself who is able to... Uh, you know, to add to the careers of, of these young riders and, and help them develop. Ultimately, I mean, that's, you know, when you, when you step out of the sport, you, you look at, you look yourself in the mirror and you say, how can I give back? And uh, my, my way of giving back right now is, is to, to contribute to Canadian cycling, giving, giving people chances and, you know, and guiding them through those chances. It's one thing to just say, pick up the phone and send a rider to Europe and leave them hanging, but it's another thing to, to pick up the phone and bring a rider to Europe with you and show them the ropes for, for a year and, you know, guide them through the, the right path rather than just leave them high and dry because that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a rough world over there and it's, you know, I think... Uh, Eventually, my goal, per, my personal goal, would be to, to form a Canadian team. Um, you know, uh, I've I've been talking about it for a bunch of years, and you know, I'm just waiting for the right fit and working on on getting the right fit. So, you know, if I can continue doing what I'm doing with the Moravita and uh, growing that, maybe a Moravita becomes the Canadian team. That's you know, we already have the bases over there. We have we have the vehicles, we have all the, the whole setup. So, you know, it makes things a little bit easier than just, you know, building something from, from the ground up because that, that takes a, a whole lot of years, which I'm not opposed to, but I'll do it with a lot more experience. So, you know, continue to grab the experience that I can grab, give the experience to the riders that I can give it to and go from there. Well, Phil, that, that sounds absolutely amazing. You know, again, congratulations on your work over the last couple of years. You obviously seem to know what you're doing, and we wish you the best of luck going forward in 2014. Uh, to you, the team, and the, these, these young riders, we're going to be looking out for them. Um, where, what races do you think will be the first that we'll see these guys in? Um, James, James and Mike will be racing um, at GP Etruski. Um, which is a 1.1 in Italy on February 2nd. Um, Alex will join the team for training camp not, not long thereafter, and uh, we'll probably see him if, if we... The, uh, let's say the race situation in Italy right now is not uh, the most stable. Um, we're, we're still waiting to see if uh, Trofeo La Guelia is going to be um, canceled or not, and if it, if it is, then you know, we're just going to extend training camp by a week. If it's not, then we'll see, uh, we'll see the three Canadians in, in Trofeo La Guelia, which is, uh, you know, it's a historical race. It's been won by Armstrong. It's been won by uh, Filippo Pozzato numerous times. So it's a, you know, it's a classic, and it would be, it'd be a shame to see it go. So I'm, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that, you know, we see the three Canadians all together at La Guelia. And uh, if not, it will be at uh, Grand Premio Camaiori on March 6th. These are exciting times, Phil. Thanks for taking time to speak with us, and uh, all the best going forward in uh, 2014.